Hey guys, it's Tari here with an updated guide on Storm Burst Totems. The build is viable for lake starting as it doesn't require any specific gear to get going and it can scale really well all the way into endgame. The build is also viable for solo cell phones and hardcore because the survivability is on a very good level. I play mostly spell totem builds already for multiple years straight and Storm Burst Totems are definitely my favorites. I always recommend them over any other spell totem build. And in patch 3.23, uh, Stoneburst received a massive buff. Uh, the base quality now provides 0.4 seconds to base duration. And duration is the best way to scale damage of this skill. As you can see, the old base duration was 1.2 seconds, so then another 0.4 is basically 33% more duration, which effectively results in 33% more damage to this skill. And besides that, uh, we got some good qualities on other skills too. Uh, for example, Arcane Cloak, really good for, uh, skill for mana scaling builds, which this build is. Uh, the new quality is 20% buff effect instead of skill effect duration. Uh, but we already have so much duration, so that was pretty relevant stat. And 20% buff effect is basically even more flat light damage from this skill and bigger survivability, like better shield on you. And another one that is significant is Sigil of Power. Uh, the new quality here gives 4% less damage uh, from enemies at maximum stages instead of air effect. So yeah, effect like previous quality was not good and uh, the new quality gives another like pretty big survivability layer. So let's get to path of building. Uh, so I try to make uh, these as detailed as possible. Let's take a look at the tray, right? Uh, so as you can see, we take both uh, skill effect duration wheels here, this one and this one. So this is more than 100% uh, increased skill effect duration, which results in uh, more than 100% more damage multiplier for the build. Uh, so besides that, so this is a mana scaling build, so we take Mind of a Matter, obviously. And together with uh, another Ascensi node here, 10% of damage taken from mana before life, we take 50% of damage from mana before life. So when we take like 1000 damage, 500 goes to mana pool, 500 to life pool. This is why I try to balance life and mana uh, being equal, right? So this is like the most efficient way for scale and defenses. So 4.1k life and so 4.1 almost 1000 mana. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, we take a lot of mana nodes on tree. Uh, the amount of increased mana is 300. This is also really powerful in combination with Lightning Mastery, which gives uh, increased shock effectiveness based on increased mana. So this like 100% increased shock effectiveness. And yeah, so scaling mana also helps uh, boost damage here. Uh, Transfiguration of Mind is also increased, uh, increases to mana, give you just raw increased damage. Um, so we also get more damage from Arcane Cloak skill that I already mentioned with the new quality. Uh, Arcane Cloak gives uh, flat damage per mana spent, basically. So yeah, the more mana we scale, the more damage we get, and the more defenses we get. And like, it's not just raw HP basically we get from Might of the Matter, but also even bigger shield from Arcane Cloak. So we don't need to take as much life on these builds as usually we do, so only 99% increased life, that's quite uh, not much. We get a little bit of increased air effect, that makes Stoneberry slightly nicer. The um, chance for orbs to overla overlap on the same targets becomes much bigger and it slightly helps with mapping speed. And also, yeah, so second skill effect duration wheel is right next to the big suppression nodes. The reflexes, there's a lot of suppression here with evasion mastery given another 15% suppression and mage bane also a good suppression keystone. So uh, it's pretty easy to get 100% spell suppression on the build. And this is uh, one of the biggest defensive layers in the game actually in the suppression. This is, uh, this is the version of the tree with uh, cluster jewels. We have a totem cluster with sleepless sentries. This is the most uh, important one. It gives uh, basically permanent onslaught to the build. And uh, mana cluster with scintillating idea. This is also a really good notable. It gives mana, which is again like a lot of damage and survivability at the same time, and damage penetration, like another damage multiplier. Uh, so yeah, we'll say totem build, we get ancestral bonds and totem nodes here. So I always travel through defensive totem nodes on the left instead of these totem nodes that give cast speed. This is not a lot of cast speed, just 10% for two nodes. Uh, so it will give like a little bit of damage here, like 3% as we can see. But uh, totem survivability is way more important. 
Uh, initially, totems have 40% resistances, so here we get 16% uh, extra totem resist, so it goes to 56. And we anoint on amulets, this is definitely the best anoint, by the way, and it's really cheap too, as you can see. Uh, totem life, totem resistances, so they get uh, kept resist, and we get flat armor per totem, so really good for our defenses too. Uh, in order for totems to not die, and for your decoy totems to be able to tank enemies easily for you, you definitely want to travel through the left nodes. Like when I see builds on PV Ninja where they travel through the right, like I immediately see, okay, so they are wrong, right? They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah, um, and let's take a look at the ascendancy. Also, like it feels really good. Every single ascendancy node is so good. So the first one that we take is uh, plus one totem and totem duration and totem placement speed. So so much quality of life and so much damage as well from plus one totem. Uh, the second ascendancy is more damage per totem, so this is also 30% more multiplier. And at the same time, we get huge mana region and decent life region too, right? Um, so the third node, uh, this got actually buffed uh, two legs ago, I think. It was in Crucible, yeah. Uh, so Arcane Blessing, it gives more spell damage when you have Arcane Surge in you. And this is uh, scaled with Arcane Surge effectiveness. So we get like 20% Arcane Surge effectiveness here, for example, right? This is 20% uh, more multiplier to this, more spell damage. So it's not 20%, it's 24% more spell damage already. This is why it's really important to get uh, Arcane Surge Effectiveness here from Arcane Capacitor. This is 40% uh, and another 50 here, so it's 90% uh, another Arcane Surge Effectiveness. So basically this note results into 42% uh, more damage, if my math is correct. 42% more. Uh, also really good uh, amount of cast speed from Arcane Cloak. And the last note, yeah, Divine Guidance. So I don't say Conviction of Power because we don't need Power Charge. It's not a, it's not a crit build. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention we take Elemental Overload, right? So we don't scale crit at all. We don't waste points on that. We invest everything into mana and uh, other like important damage sources. Uh, so mana is everything, like I said. It's uh, damage and survivability. So what else do you need, right? Uh, Divine Guidance uh, gives even more mana and Transfiguration of Mind, a uh, good way to scale damage with mana builds. And like bigger, bigger percent of damage taken from mana before life. Uh, so yeah, conviction of power gives endurance shards, but we get endurance shards from other source. I will show it later in the gear section. So power shards we don't even need basically, and we still generate them actually with mines. As I think that sits on the tree. Uh, now we should look at skills we're using, right? Uh, so the main skill is obviously Stormburst Totems. They go into body armor. Uh, so all the support gems here are in order of importance. The so Stormbreak Spell Totem, obviously, <laughs> then Physical to Lightning. We need to convert the rest of the... Uh, like, yeah, Stormbreak converts 50% of Physical to Lightning. So we need to convert the other half to Lightning. So the most important support here after Spell Totem. Then Lightning Penetration. Uh, then Cruelty. And the last support, Control Destruction. So I already mentioned that uh, this is Elemental Overload build, uh, so we need to create just like a little bit, right, to proc this 8, eight second duration of 40% more damage, more Elemental damage. Uh, so the way, it works, uh, the way it works with Totems is um, Totems need to create, and then the Totems, all the Totems, will be doing this more damage. So, as you can see, because of Control Destruction giving 80% less crit chance, we only have 1.2% crit chance. This is very low, you would think, but uh, Stone Burst is such a skill that hits so many times per second. So as you can see, the cast rate is like th 7 here, uh, and we have 4 totems at the same time, so we can multiply by 4, so it's going to be like almost 30 hits per second. And uh, also, every orb jumps multiple times, so we can multiply that even further. To proc elemental overload, it's not a problem. So this is a really powerful thing that we can use control destruction. Uh, tested that multiple time, uh, multiple times on bosses. So the elemental overload of time is good. It's just the initially, like when you just spawn the boss, it takes like three, four seconds to finally proc elemental overload, which is not much uh, time actually. And then you have permanent elemental overload. Uh, so second skill, a uh, wave of conviction mines, which we later switch to stone blast mines, as you can see here. Um, I explained everything, by the way, that I'm talking about right now in the notes section in PUB. So really important to uh, take a look at that as well. Probably, if you have any questions, they should be answered here. 
I have also frequently asked questions here, right? So, which I will try to update that and put more questions and answers later. Initially, we use wave of conviction mines because wave conviction applies lightning exposure. That's really important, right? Like additional penetration for the skill. And uh, we need to use mines because um, otherwise wave conviction will not be able to apply exposure because of ancestral bonds. Like it needs to deal damage in order to apply exposure. High impact mine gives uh, the last line here, as you can see. Uh, 2% chance to deal double damage to hit against enemies near the mine. So you throw one mine and your totems get 2% chance to deal double damage, which is effectively 2% more damage multiplier. So mines are really powerful, like they're better than traps, even though they require one more button to press, like you need to detonate mines. But uh, like I really recommend to try to just play with them a little bit. And uh, like it will become smooth, trust me, because I can't even play builds without mines honestly anymore. Like sometimes I do, and uh, I feel like I have nothing to press anymore. Uh, so, and then we have charge mines. So through that we generate um, frenzy charges, which is a more damage multiplier. We get some power charges too to proc elemental overloads even easier. But uh, like I said, it's not even required. It's mostly for frenzy charges. Then we have vitality aura. This is really powerful aura with totem builds because uh, there is a hidden modifier on totems actually. Totems take 80% less damage from enemies. Because of that, the sources of flat life regeneration effectively give Totem um, 5 times as much regen. So Vitality gives not 200 life regen basically to Totems, but 1000 life regen. This is really powerful. Uh, and for decoy Totems as well. Uh, speaking of de decoy Totems, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, decoy Totems also received the buff. Uh, the new quality on decoy totems, this is still old here in PB. Yeah, so old quality was 20% increased totem life, and new quality will be 20% more life for decoy totems. So they get even beefier, even though they already could tank really well before. We have determination. Again, this is really important aura. Um, it doesn't scale our physical max hits a lot, but it uh, uh, saves a lot versus like small and medium physical hits. And there is a lot of physical hits in maps, like not big, but small and medium. So yeah, this provides a, like really big survivability to, to mapping. Uh, like technically, if you go for only bossing and you don't want to map with these builds, yeah, I guess you can uh, replace Determination with just Zealotry Aura for more damage. Uh, but uh, like I still wouldn't recommend, honestly. Yeah, so again, effective hit pull is really big on this build. I mean, it's, it's like really good. <laughs> I try to specifically make this build tanky and uh, also dealing a lot of damage, right? 11.6 millions. So that's great. And we'll have decoy totems linked to multiple totem supports. So this way uh, you can summon decoy totems in addition to your stone burst totems. So you don't have to like sacrifice one of your stone bursts for taunting enemies. It's in addition. Uh, flame dash for travel. For like movement, uh, the next we have Arcane Cloak linked to Arcane Surge, Sigil of Power, and uh, because it's in uh, boots, we have Elder Influence boots. We're gonna talk about that a bit later, but uh, yeah, so there is increased duration support here. So it's really important to have this setup specifically in boots. We want Arcane Cloak to have even more duration, so the up so that uptime of Arcane Cloak will be even better. And Sigil of Power is also like benefits from durations so, because you get to maximum stages. And Sigil will be there on the ground for like another 30-40 seconds. That's very good. Um, and we have Curse Conductivity. So Arcane Clock, by the way, we put on left mouse button. So it just automatically will cast like whenever you move. Uh, you can do this on consoles, I know. So I'm not sure. I guess on console you have to press like another button. But um, yeah, for PC gamers, just put in left on left click and it's going to be smooth. Uh, so Sigil of Power is a circle you place on the ground. Uh, when you spend mana, you upgrade it to next stage. Like when you put it on the ground, it immediately has one stage. So you need to upgrade three times. Uh, so every time you cast Wrath linked to Divine Blessing, uh, you upgrade the stage. Like it's definitely going to be enough mana. And with our big mana region, it's going to be not a problem to like quickly upgrade Sigil of Power to maximum four stages. So that provides a lot of flat slight damage to spells. Uh, and uh, Makes it so that the enemy inside of the circle also deal way less damage. Again, with the new quality, it's going to be even less, less damage. 
Yeah, by the way, so Seas of Power, the way it works with totems is uh, you, like your character needs to be in Savage Circle. You don't really care where your totems are because totems scale with damage of your character. So you don't need to place totems inside of the circle. Like your character needs to be in the circle. And it's also okay to go out of the circle and go back into the circle. So like while your character in the character in the circle, uh, you get them or totems deal more damage, right? So it's like really smooth, kind of like fail proof even. Uh, so here we have a self cast stormburst setup. Uh, basically, stormburst links to infuse channeling, and we also have like another um, socket. So I just put a calling strike here so, so that the build had calling strike. But yeah, so this is the more impo most important. So Infused Channeling provides Infusion buff after you channel for 0.6 seconds. Yeah, so the second red line says that you need to channel for 0.6 seconds only. So this is a really short duration. You, like, you, you channel for 0.6 seconds and you get this uh, Infusion buff for... Uh, so base duration is 6 seconds, as you can see, but uh, with so much increased duration from our build, it's going to be 13 plus seconds. So you don't even have to do this too often. And um, it gives temps and more damage uh, for each type matching the gem stacks. So this has physical and lightning tag. So infusion will provide temps and more physical damage and temps and more lightning damage. And our totems benefit from uh, both types of damage in this case. And uh, overall, it's going to be 16% more damage for a very short um, channel time and just basically two sockets and gears. So very, very effective very good damage multiplier so yeah the next we have uh wrath link to divine blessing so this is going to be a temporary aura we also link it to inspiration uh so that uh, it would cost less mana to, to, to cast it uh, which by the way inspiration also received a nice buff the new uh, the new quality by default will give another five percent reduced mana cost uh there used to be alternate quality like this before but uh, so yeah now it's going to be baseline quality so that's uh, better in my opinion you don't have to like farm highs for that uh, Wrath Aura, it lasts for a duration, but again, we have a lot of skill effect duration. So you cast it and it lasts for a long time. Uh, so what's the uh, base duration on Divine Blessing here? It, yeah, it's 11 seconds, 10.9. 10 so with all, all our duration, it's going to be almost 25 seconds. Again, like really smooth. And yeah, so Stoneblast Mines, uh, once we get exposure on Implicit on Gloves, uh, we can stop using Wave of Conviction mines because Wave of Conviction is mostly for exposure. And we can switch to Stone Blast mines. Stone Blast has even stronger aura around the mine. Uh, so, again, a high packed mine used to give 2% chance to deal double damage to enemies around mines. Uh, but Stone Blast mine gives 3% increased damage taken on enemies. And again, these got buffed in 3.23. The quality will make it so that it's 4% increased damage taken to enemies. So you basically throw one mine, and uh, enemy takes 4% increased damage, which is the same effect as Shock, for example. Shock is also increased damage taken. So one mine is effectively 4% Shock. This is uh, amazing damage multiplier too. I don't even account for that damage multiplier here in full DPS. Uh, but yeah, so like let, let's imagine you throw just like 5 mines real quick. We also link it to Swift Assembly, so there's a chance to throw 4 mines with just one cast. And um, you get, with 5 mines, you get 20% additional shock on enemy. It's not, it's not really shock, but effectively it is shock, right? And so, so the cast animation of mines is also really short, really smooth. Like, it's not, it's not a problem to cast that at all. And uh, here's the skills we use in this build, yeah. Now let's get to items, I guess. Uh, so I have uh, two versions of this build now. This time, so this is uh, Solo Cell Phone's hardcore starter friendly version where I only used uh, rare items. And um, this time I also made a um, like a more min maxed uh, trade version of the build that uh, uses unique items. So let's, let's take a look at this version first. One here uh, on weapon, you can have a lot of mana. Yeah, plus one level to skills is nice. Uh, so as you can see, I don't use many modifiers, so it shouldn't be too hard to craft that. Uh, so benchcraft to light damage and chance of shock is also nice. Basically a two-stat want. Um, on all the items here, I only use like tier two versions of modifiers at max, so that yeah, it would be like even easier to craft them.
So the most important item in the build is Shaper Influence Shield. So it has to be item level 70 plus shield with Shaper Influence, and then it can roll on, on prefix plus one number of summoned totems. So this is a huge damage multiplier, right? We get uh, from three to four totems, so it's 33% more damage. And from half Sense, we get another 5% uh, more damage uh, multiplier and uh, life and mana region per totem. You, you gotta get these shields. Uh, usually I, playing on Soul Cell Phone, get these shields pretty late into the game, already when I'm in red maps. It's kind of hard to farm uh, Shaper Influence items. Shaper Influence shields, yeah, usually I kind of have to even get to Shaper Guardians and drop it from them. But theoretically, I mean, on trade, like, you can just buy that, right? It shouldn't be expensive to buy just a Shaper base of low item level. And um, the other way to farm it is uh, to use Shaper Scarabs. You can even use them in lower tier maps and use the map to, like, as much quantity as possible. And there's also a Divination card that rewards Shaper Shield, but uh, it's a really rare card. It's called Astral Protection and drops from Moon Temple map. So I tried to farm it and I never got the Shaper Shield this way. You just had to farm like 200 plus maps. That was uh, too, too much. Yeah, let's take a look at the helmet. So on most of the gear, what we need is basically life and mana and suppression. This provides a lot of defenses, right? It's just a raw HP from life, from mana. Suppression is a great uh, defensive layer. Uh, the body armor. Yeah, the way this implicit, uh, so we get Eldritch implicits here. Uh, you craft them with Eldritch Ikers and Embers. Um, so they receive this Syrian Exarch and Eater of Worlds influence, as you can see. So physical damage taken as uh, lightning damage or as elemental damage is a really good uh, way to mitigate physical damage in this game. So we try to get a little bit of this stat, really good for scaling defenses. We get that on body armor as well, as you can see. Uh, Benchcraft is 6% of physical taken as fire and as lightning. We get some mana, spell suppression here. Really important to get it on uh, uh, pieces of gear when we can get it. So yeah, we have gloves with the inflict lightning exposure on hit, as you can see. So once you get such gloves with spamming Eldritch Ikers, uh, you can switch from Wave Conviction Mines to Stormblast Mines, and it's going to be even better. Uh, so yeah, we get life, mana suppression, some resistances. Uh, the second most important piece of gear, I would say, is Elder Influence Boots. So with the new duration threshold after the buff to stone burst, uh, we want to get a little bit more skill effect duration, which we cannot get from tree. We already get both duration clusters here, and taking this duration is like it's too costly. This is like a minion note here. Uh, so yeah, we craft uh, elder influence boots. Uh, they have to be item level sixty eight plus, so pretty much any item level. And the suffix can have that, as you can see. Uh, socketed gems are supported by increased duration and 15% skill effect duration. This is one modifier. It's a hybrid modifier, a two in one. Uh, and then we have some mana, some suppression, and benchcrafted movement speeds. Uh, amulet. Again, this is tier two life and mana, actually, but I used uh, catalysts here, fertile catalysts, to scale the quality of life and mana, the magnitudes. Uh, we benchcraft minimum endurance charge on amulet and rings. So, uh, so have three permanent endurance charges without having that on ascendancy. So this is a really good defensive layer. Um, and cast speed. I get cast speed on amulet and on rings. Uh, this is also a really nice uh, damage multiplier and uh, also quality of life. So you can cast your skills faster, conductivity, divine blessing aura. Everything is faster. Uh, the best annoyance, I already mentioned that actually, Ironwood gives totem defenses and your character defenses. It's really good. Uh, so yeah, we get some stats here, dex, strength, uh, life, mana, like everywhere else on the gear. Uh, belt with life and mana and resistances. Jewel, life and mana, resistance. Uh, and we have a totem cluster, where we've seen that, mana cluster and a jewel, life, mana, resistance. We looked at the three skills items, so I will mention again, we have notes here. Um, so I explained here how Stoneburst works, the duration thresholds, the playstyle, like what you need to do in maps, in bosses, like what skills to press, at, like at what point. Oh, the leveling, yeah, we forgot to check out the leveling, true. So the way I like leveling, every time uh, I start using Stoneblast Mine from the very beginning, 
It's a matter of preference. I think Stoneblast Mine is really smooth early on, but uh, a lot of racers like using, uh, what's it called, Rolling Magma, right? Because it hits really hard, so it stuns enemies. But Stoneblast Mine is just uh, cast speed, or cast animation is so short, it feels so smooth to me. And then we get uh, at level 4 Hall of Flame Totem with Flame Wall, really powerful combination. We use that combo all the way until the first lap when we switch to Stoneburst Totems at level 32, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, I explained everything here, uh, as you can see, like what supports to use. So initially we can use uh, Summon Phantasm, and then at level 8 on Hall of Flame Totem we can switch to Edit Fire Damage plus Combustion. Um, so I try to put like every single skill you can or you want to use while leveling, but uh, some of the skills, like if you don't have sockets for them, it's okay to not use them, right? So I put this not important mark here. So it's not important to have still skin on left mouse button. Uh, vitality, it's okay to like not use it. Um, what else to say? Yeah, so Vitality, when you use until level 16, at level 16 we get uh, two really powerful heralds, Herald of Vash and Herald of Purity. After you kill Fidelities in Act 2, you can switch. Uh, you can start using them. This is a really, really great damage multiplier for Holy Flame Totem. So we only use these heralds until we switch to Stone Burst after first lap. So yeah, Wave Conviction Mines really nice. It applies exposure and uh, hits pretty hard too. Uh, again, new supports for Holy Flame Totem. I use Physical to Lightning so that we could fully convert to elemental damage because at this point from Tree we already have some um, elemental damage and elemental overload. So it doesn't feel good to waste this elemental damage on physical portion of Hall of Flame Totem. And yeah, so finally at level 32 we complete the first lap, we get Stoneburst Totems, Connectivity. Uh, so self-cast Stoneburst, you can start using that uh, from the very beginning. Again, you get Infusion buff, right, which gives 16% more damage. But uh, with low level Infuse Channeling skill, or support, uh, you have to channel for too long. I think it's 1.2 seconds channeling until you get Infusion. So it feels a bit more clunky. So once you get it to level 20, 20, it's 0.6 and it feels super smooth. But yeah, so it's not really important to use it immediately. I still put it here because like it's a damage multiplier. So we get decoy totems. Uh, once we get multiple totem support to level 38, and it become like we become super tanky. Initially, we can use second wind to summon two totems at a time. Uh, but uh, eventually, I recommend to remove second wind because uh, like. First, it is, it's another socket, so we don't have to waste it here, and I think it's completely fine to summon one decoy totem. Because when you summon two of them at the same place, they can get killed faster just because of splash damage. But then if you can place them one by one in like two different places, I think it's uh, smoother. And yeah, at level 58 we switch to Mind of a Matter on Tree. And we, uh, we also complete the second labyrinth, we get a lot of mana regeneration from it, and we can start using our Arcane Cloak on the left mouse button. Arcane Cloak spends a lot of mana, by, uh, but uh, by that time we have a lot of mana regen from Ascendancy, and we have this, um, the Mana Mastery. Like when you use a guard skill, you recover 10% of mana over one second back. And also some other guard skill uh, buffs here from Dynamo. We also get Wrath of Divine Blessing at level 58. Uh, I specifically made it so that uh, by that level, we're gonna get uh, less reduced mana cost here from Dreamer and reduced mana cost from Righteous Decree. Uh, I can show it actually. So I have level and treats here, right? So at level 58, we have this, we have this, we have this already. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the level and treats a bit later. Well, actually, yeah, right now because uh, yeah, because we checked out all the level and gems. So level and treats are just like that. So level 12. Well, I mean, that's all self-explanatory. You just uh, switch, and you can see what's, uh, what notes to take. You can actually scroll here, like b uh, bottom, s scroll down and scroll up, and you see like visually what changes, right? So we scroll down, we go like this. Yeah, we switch the tree a little bit. And all the way to the end. So this is tree with cluster jewels, and before we get cluster jewel, before we craft it, we have a level 95 version of the tree without clusters, and we take the damage nodes here, Divine Judgment and Divine Wrath. And in the end, like I said, this time I made a more min-max version of this tree. Uh, it's in the nodes, the link is right here. Uh, so I specifically... Wait, this is the wrong tree here, yeah. So the final tree, level 97. Uh, I tried to... 
not sacrifice any defenses and only scale the damage even further. Like, I really like the durable build um, to not be too squishy and glass cannon. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the min-max version of PUB. We don't need to save here. So, here what it links to. As you can see, the effective hit pool is even bigger. It was 86,000, I think, there, and we have 94,000 here. The DPS is almost three times bigger, three, 32 millions. Uh, we use uh, four, no, five different unique items. Uh, so Ashes of the Stars is the most expensive here for sure. But uh, So yeah, this is like a really good uh, unique, especially for this build, because uh, Stone Burst quality is really powerful, like I said in the beginning of the video. The flat um, duration that you get from quality is extremely powerful, and there is a bunch of other skill gems in this build that benefit so much from Ashes of the Stars. So the min maxed version of the build definitely uses Ashes of the Stars. Uh, other uniques are cheaper than that. Uh, we have Algor Mortis gloves. They should be cheap, and as you can see, the second to last line here, enemies in your chilling areas take 35% increased lightning damage. So this is a great damage multiplier to the build. Uh, but in order to create a chill grounds, we need to self-cast Creeping Frost. As you can see here, we have this instead of Culling Strike on Stoneburst uh, self-cast. So Creeping Frost creates a chilled area for 5 seconds, and we have a lot of skill effect duration again, right? So the chilled area will um, last for like 12 seconds or so, right? So 10 seconds plus. And it will also follow enemies. This is like a mobile chilling area. So it's very smooth to use Creeping Frost in my opinion. So yeah, what else is important here? So we use Mark of the Shaper. This is the um, unique ring. Uh, it's really important to have 20% quality for caster modifiers here, so you need to use the catalyst that gives the give uh, caster quality. Uh, it scales both flat light damage to spells here and increased spell damage if your other ring is Elder Item. That's 93% increased damage from the uh, ring slot, that's really powerful. Make sure that your other ring is Elder Influenced Item. So I use a really similar ring here to what we had in the normal version of the build. It's just Elder Influenced, also Life Mana, bigger cast speed. And yeah, of course we use Watcher's Eye. Uh, so here I was pretty humble, just use one stat Watcher's Eye. Uh, so the most powerful stats damage-wise you can get is 25% of physical is extra light damage when affected by Wrath. And again, we have Wrath temporarily, but uh, like most of the time you can't have it active with Divine Blessing. And we have Thread of Hope, yeah, so Thread of Hope in this uh, spot with medium ring is really nice because you can get both uh, top lightning nodes here. This scales uh, shock effectiveness even further, and it also scales sap effect that we get from Algor Mortis gloves. And here we have like damage and penetration, and you can also take this, right, Arcane Will, so mana for free, like without having to take this node especially, energy shield recharge rate is not good. So yeah, that's uh, all the uniques we use here. Uh, so we have to use Wave Conviction Mines instead of uh, Stone Blast Mines because uh, we lost our exposure on hits from gloves in places. Um, but yeah, so the tree is slightly changed here. The gears uh, like better rolled. Yeah, we have a suppression on shield here to still be able to have 100% spell suppression. But yeah, so this version of the build is both tankier and way more damage. So yeah, that's... I think all I wanted to say about the build, uh, again, if I forgot to mention something, this must be mentioned uh, in the main Stoneburst Totems guide uh, in the notes here. Uh, should be really good raids. And as always, I will uh, post all my builds in this uh, spreadsheet that I also leave a link in the video description, like in addition to the links to the PUBs we were just looking at. Um, so yeah, so far we have just uh, Stoneburst here, but I'm already really excited to try a bunch of new skill gems as well, like Penance Brand Totems, Fallen Zombie Totems. So yeah, I'll try to link all, all the builds here. So I hope you guys will enjoy this really powerful build. Stomper's Totems, again, they're just the strongest. I always recommend them to everyone who asks, like to, to the new Totem player, to the veteran Totem players. And um, yeah, have a nice, have a nice leak. Have a nice Affliction leak, guys. And take care of your totems. See you.